Hi everyone. I'm going to wait a, a couple of minutes to see if anyone is joining. Today I'm starting a, a set of, of live events where I want to have informal conversations with you about different concepts related to, to coding and, and Android development. Obviously always very focused into, into coding as, as you may know I'm, I'm an expert on it and, and that's what I want to focus on. And my goal with this is to uh, discover, find out the situation of, of the language in the market and to encourage you to learn this language. And in this live event, uh, what I'll do is to uh, give you content so that you can start with it and, and uh, learn the main concepts of the language little by little. So my, my idea so that we can, um, so that you can understand how this is going to work is to do an event uh, per week. I'll, I'll do it usually live on Facebook, though maybe I, I do some others on YouTube or, or even some that are, are not live, but record it and then upload it. But I want to serve some, some content uh, from, uh, one one per week more or less uh, in about around uh, half an hour or an hour or something like that so that you can continue uh, progressing as I, may, as I mentioned this is going to be very informal i'm not preparing it too much because i be, i want it to be very casual and even if i'm going to have some prepared ideas for for the first um trainings sorry for the first uh, live events the idea, the goal is that uh, you can, uh, using the comments here or, or on YouTube or, or wherever place you want, you can uh, propose different topics and then I, I'll use them for the, for the next live events. So as I mentioned, uh, this is going to be weekly based uh, periodically and uh, I'll share it with you here on, on Facebook and also on, on YouTube and, and other channels. But uh, keep in mind that this is going to be the place usually where this will be live. So if you want to not to miss anything, uh, use, uh, use the group and, and, and join to the alerts. And if you are watching it uh, through another platform, you can join uh, uh, Facebook look, looking for Golden for Android Dev Developers Group and there it will will be together at least once per, per, per week. So what I wanted to talk about today, let me take my notes, is um, today is an introductory, um, an introductory video to explain uh, first a little what is calling for the ones that don't know about it yet. I guess that many of you, if you are watching this, is because you know about it, but I want to uh, remind what was the origin of the language and how was initially um, initially con conceived and how it has it has been evolving during the years. The second point I want to to mention and, and I want to let you know is that uh, what's the current situation of the language in the market? How companies are, are adopting it? Uh, how is this is growing? so that you can have a better idea, a better uh, um, feeling or, or how important it is for an Android developer to learn coding nowadays. And finally, we'll do just a, a small example in, in Android Studio so that uh, we can see um, how to create a first project using Kotlin and, and see the main differences when you create a, a project using Kotlin as opposed to using Java. So, as I mentioned, this is going to be quite introductory, but I, I'd love to to let me know if you are watching it, uh, what are your impressions, and and if you want to comment something, we can talk about it. So this is the magic of live events, that we can interact and, and help each other fi uh, find out the solutions to, to our questions. So first of all, uh, regarding what it's calling, uh, as you may already know, Colding was a language created by JetBrains. JetBrains is the company behind many 
powerful IDEs. The, the, most, uh, the most popular is IntelliJ, which is the one that Java developers use. Uh, it's the most popular because it's the one that, that they have a, like a um, community version and a, and a premium version. So the community version is free and it's uh, widely used around the world to develop uh, software using Java. But uh, apart from that, they have ideas related to, to a lot of different um, a lot of different languages and and if you as you may know Android Studio is based on this uh, IDE on IntelliJ so uh, we have been using their software for many years now uh, when developing Android apps so at, at some point uh, the the JetBrains team decided to create a new language initially only for their own purposes because Java was becoming a bit obsolete for them, so they decided to uh, create a much more modern and powerful language that could help them speed up their their development. This was the initial thought, but they, from the very first moment, decided to make it uh, to make it open source. So uh, from that moment they also started to build up a, a community around the language and, and a lot of people started becoming interested and um, at some point there was a lot of people uh, using it and, and trying it and giving feedback because the something i forgot to mention is that the main focus of, on coding initially was to be run on the java virtual machine so everyone that was uh, doing Java development using the Java virtual machine could uh, get all the benefit from using Kotlin. And that's uh, where it started evolving and, and where the community started growing. And it was especially important in the Android world because as you know, when we develop uh, Android apps, the problem that we have is that we have to use a very uh, ancient version of Java. We are tied to to the versions that the devices have that initially were the the most used ones were were using at that point java 1.6 then we could start using a, a limited version of java 1.7 and and nowadays we still have some limitations but uh, luckily we we can start using some of the um, some of the features that java 8 has but this is still very far away from from the modern languages we have a lot of missing features the the problems that java had in its its inception are still there because they need backwards compatibility so that's why um, it started becoming so important in android development suddenly we had a very powerful language where we could develop our android apps and it became so popular that at some point uh, Google decided to uh, come uh, to start supporting it and it became another official language to develop Android apps. It was a, a very important moment and, and from that point the, the growth of the language uh, ha, has been unstoppable. It keeps growing and growing and we talk, we'll talk about some of these figures later. But getting back to the language, um, it was, as I mentioned, it was initially focused in Java Virtual Machine, but nowadays we have many other options. First, they they created an experimental version to be run on uh, on front end, which is called called in GAs, which is a a similar version to to something similar to TypeScript. It's a it's a language that then transpiles to JavaScript. It creates a JavaScript code that can be run when it's compiled that can be run in the in, in any browser. It was initially created as an experimental feature, but in the end it became it was released and, and now it can be used as a as a supported feature. And apart from that, they after some time decided to 
to get away from any virtual machines and decided to create Kotlin native, which is a version of the language that can be run on any version of the language, sorry, on, on any device that they decide to support. For instance, we can now run Kotlin on, on a Raspberry Pi or even on iOS devices. So this open up, opens up a, a world of possibilities. That uh, mixed to the idea of, of multi-platform projects, uh, what it will help us do in the future is that we can create um, common modules that are running a, a generic version of, Kod of Kotlin that then can be uh, used in specific modules uh, that then will be run on an Android device, for instance, or, or an iOS device, a browser. So ideally, in the world, in the in the future, we'll be in in a world where, where we can share a lot of, uh, we can build up all our apps in our company in Kotlin and share a lot of common code in in those multi-platform modules. This is something that nowadays is still an experimental feature, but in the future we'll be able to use it and I'm sure that will be a, another boost of the, in the use of, of Kotlin because not many languages nowadays offer uh, these possibilities as Kotlin is doing it. And getting back again to what, the, what are the premises of the language, Kotlin was created to be a pragmatic pragmatic and concise. And in this sense, they try to avoid all the boilerplate that other languages like, like Java uh, force us to do. For instance, by removing semicolons or uh, instantiating and uh, defining class classes is really easy and with constructors that are very easy to implement and to declare the properties of the, of the class in a very simple way. We'll see all this in, in future live events, but for now, keep that in mind that with Kotlin, you can uh, re uh, reduce the number of, of, of lines of code in, a, in an impressive way. From what I've seen from other projects and, and what I've read and my own experience is that you can reduce up to 40% of the lines of code maybe 25 percent if it's a more conservative number that uh, you will uh, almost for sure uh, achieve but you can even achieve in uh, up to 40 percent of code reduction and this is very important because if you reduce the, the number of lines of code you are reducing the, the number of problems that you can have in, the, in that code so you are limiting the, the bugs in your app you are also reducing the code you have to maintain and to understand. So creating new features and, and adding up new new code to your base code is much easier, much faster. So coding makes you uh, much more productive than, than, than Java in that situation. But apart from that, coding was created to be more secure. More secure in the sense that the language and the compiler helps you more when you are writing your Android apps. So um, it's uh, much easier not, not to commit the same errors that we have in Java. For instance, null pointer exceptions. I'm sure that if you go to, to check your apps, your back tracker in the Play Store or if you use Fabric, I'm sure that around 80% of the errors or 90% are null pointer exceptions. Coldings, for instance, has a way to uh, limit the number of null pointer exceptions that you may have because uh, you have what they call the nullable types, which are types that can, can contain a null. In general, a type uh, won't be able to uh, keep a null, to save a null in their, in their variables because uh, the types are not nullable by default, so when you are working with it, you can be sure that you are working with a non-nullable value. But in the case that you need a null, you can create a nullable type, which is the same as the regular type, but with a question mark. And from that point, the compiler will force you to check 
the nullability of that variable. So it's much more difficult to uh, commit errors in, in that situation as the compiler is going to uh, force you to do all those checks. So this is really powerful and and it helps you think in another way. It helps you understand that you don't need to uh, to have uh, nulls all around your base code, that you can keep them in the minimum place as, as possible. And that way uh, you are reducing the, the number of possibilities where your code can, can be null and where you can have these situations. But apart from null, there are other many things like seal classes, for instance, that will help the compiler understand the number of subclasses that a class can have and this uh, will make your code much more uh, predictable and much easier to understand where, where what are the possible states of your of your code and apart from that there are many other little things that you will be able to see if you continue watching these these events this this recording so uh, i'm sure that you learn a lot from that but uh, keep that in mind that with Kotlin it's it's going to become much more much easier to uh, reduce the number of, of problems the number of errors in, in your base code and apart from all that another advantage of Kotlin is that is 100 percent interoperable this means that all the code that you write in Kotlin can be used from Java and the other way around. All the code that is written in Java can be used from Kotlin. And this has um, been an important, an important part of the language that helped help it uh, make it so popular as you don't need to create all your base code in Kotlin. You can keep using the libraries that you were using before. This means that uh, even if at the beginning, there were not many libraries or much code written in, in Kotlin. It didn't matter because you could write your new code in Kotlin and oper interoperate with the old code in Java with, uh, without any issues and keep using the old libraries also without any issues. This was a, a very important point since the very beginning for, for Kotlin developers because they were aware of, of the situation that if they created a new language that was not interoperable with any other of the existing um, Java code, and the, co the language wouldn't become popular in any, in any ways. So apart from that, they need it for their own purposes because they, were, they, had, they had a huge base code written in Java for their IDEs and what they required is to be able to create a new code in Kotlin while maintaining the old code. They, they couldn't afford to write all their code in Kotlin from scratch. So that's what made Kotlin become so, success, so successful. And um, at some point it was released, uh, when I started learning about it, it was still like an alpha, an early access preview. And a few months later, uh, it became a, a beta and I think that w half a year later it finally was released, the 1.0 version. Uh, like w half a month ago or so, uh, the final version um, got three years old. So so we've been three years with, with Kotlin al already with the final version of Kotlin and since then, a lot of things have, have, have happened. The first one and the most important that I mentioned that Google adopted it as an official language to develop Android apps. And nowadays they are very focused in, in boosting the, the Android productivity using Kotlin to the point that they are creating a lot of new libraries that take advantage of the new features of Kotlin uh, and not only writing Java code. So uh, we can see that Google is uh, putting a, a lot of effort and enthusiasm on this language and that we can be sure that it will keep being used for a long time. Once uh, made the introduction, I made the introduction of the language, now I wanted to tell you about the current situation of Kotlin in the on the market. Nowadays, there are 
lots of companies that are using it, that are adopting it. I know many companies that uh, ask me for for my training to to migrate from coding from Java to coding, but I also know of many other people that uh, follow me on, on the through my through my blog or or that bought my book or my online course. They all tell me that they are migrating in their companies from Java to coding or at least starting to use the language in the in the new code. And this is uh, the feeling is really is really great because it looks like all companies are are starting to use it but these are not only feelings they are they are real numbers and and we can see it in in some of the of the numbers that that the coding team released during their last coding conf in 2018 they said like like for instance that nowadays one out of four apps in the play store in the play store are using coding uh, as their language no, that doesn't mean that they have uh, all their base code written in coding, but that they have at least part of their code written in coding. The new code that they are writing is written in coding. One, one out of four uh, from the 1,000 that are most used in the Play Store. So we are not talking about apps that uh, barely any person are use, any people are using but are the most used in the play store the the ones that thousands and millions of users of users are using in their day to day so this means that not only that the companies are starting adopting it but that they rely on the language for apps that are widely used and that require uh, a lot of efficiency and and stability because they are the most popular in the in the Play Store, so uh, uh, that gives uh, gives us the sense that the the sector, that the the market, the Android companies are relying on this language a lot to create their apps. The other thing is that the number of jobs, that the presence of the language on, on GitHub, for instance, uh, and the number of devs the of developers are growing exponentially. We can see uh, that the the numbers of the of the use of coding from one year to another grows uh, four times from from one year to the next one. So, and this is uh, a measure that has been kept steady from since the release of, of coding 1.0, and in fact this year uh, numbers are even bigger. It was four time four times greater already in October. So. So you can imagine that the language is becoming becoming more and more popular. In fact, GitHub uh, mentioned that this is the fastest growing language in their platform. So my opinion and, and my impression is that we've reached to a point where Android developers can no longer keep um, forgetting about the language or, or delaying the learning the language because at some point they are going to need it. And if they don't know about Coding, they are going to be uh, some steps behind their their competence. For instance, for reaching a new job or inside your your own job to get more responsibility. And in my opinion, uh, nowadays is the perfect moment to start. Well, the perfect moment was yesterday, but the second perfect is today. So I really recommend you to start using Coding and to and to learn how to use it. To how to develop Android apps using it and to get the most out of the language. So with this video, I want to show you some of these things that I think that are important to start learning the language and uh, you can uh, follow them on your own or, or ask me for help with any of my other um, products that I may have. I, as, as you wish. I, I promise that I'll give a lot of value in these videos so that you can uh, learn on your own and, and start learning how to create Android apps. So uh, at this point what I wanted to show you is how to create your first project using Coldlin and we are going to, re to run our first app with Coldlin code. So let me check how I can share my screen. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I can do it now. No, it seems that if you start without sharing your screen, you cannot share it later. So, uh, what we are going to do is to to leave it here in this in this video, and in the next one, I'll share my screen from the very beginning, and we can uh, take a look. But I can give you a an introduction on how to do that. It's really easy. You just need to go to Android Studio, and when you create a new project, it will show uh, the option to select um, when you have to choose the name and the and the package of the of the of your app. There's also an option to select which language you are going to use. You can use Kotlin or Java, and if you use you choose Kotlin, it will create a project where with all the all you with all you need. To, to to start using your Kotlin code. You will see that the main activity that is created automatically is created using Kotlin language, and you can start checking the differences there. We'll see in the next video what these differences are and how you can and and, and how you can use them to to understand uh, the new features of the language. You will see that it's very similar. That even if you haven't use coding before you can understand the, the language that the code that you are seeing there and if you go to both build.gradle the one the application sorry the the project one and the and the module one you will see that in the project one it has added the the coding plugin and then you can go to the module one and you will see that it has added the plugins to the top of the of the toolbar, sorry, to the top of the um, of the file. There you will see the Kotlin Android plugin and the Kotlin Android extension plugins. We'll talk about all, all this in future videos, but so that you can make an idea. Th with that, you can uh, add Kotlin files to your project, and the project will be able to understand them and to compile them. And if you go to the dependencies, to to the dependency section in that build.trader, build you will see also a new library that is the the Kotlin standard library which adds a lot of features and a lot of um, possibilities uh, around first to to simplify your code when dealing with Java but also uh, new libraries and new um, features that uh, help you write a better Kotlin code, and we'll see there that we have things like, um, like uh, a lot of functions that are applied to to lists, for instance, and and the different collections that we have in Java. But but there are a lot of things there. Some some functions that are really powerful, and that, and that we'll see in a future video too. Uh, and there you will see how. Uh, how powerful Kotlin can be and what, a lot of the things that it can do for you. And once you have that, you can run your app and you'll be running your first app using Kotlin in, in an Android device. It's, it's that easy. It's really easy to start developing Android apps using Kotlin. But we'll see all that in, in the screen in a future video. I don't know if I'll wait till next week or, I, or, or I'll do it before because I wanted to tell it today, but I didn't know that Facebook Live doesn't allow you to, to share your screen you, once you have started uh, talking. So that's it. What I'll do is to create a new video for that. And for today, just a summary that Kotlin uh, is a really powerful language that was created by, by IntelliJ, sorry, by JetBrains. The, the company behind IntelliJ, which is the the, the ID that is uh, where what uh, where Android Studio is based on, and that it's a very um, thoughtful language. They have tried to fix all the problems that Java had to uh, improve uh, our experience as, our, as developers in the Java Virtual Machine. That nowadays. Is not only restricted to Java Virtual Machine. There are many places, many extra places where we can use it. 
I forgot, for instance, to mention that now we can write our Gradle, Gradle scripts also using Colden, but you can also use it uh, where you use JavaScript or, or, or with the native uh, project, you can run it on, on many other devices. And that, um, that the language is now officially supported by Google to develop Android apps, and that has made uh, that the adoption of the language has grown exponentially, and nowadays is used in most uh, tech companies that develop Android apps. So again, I really recommend you to start learning Kotlin, and I hope these videos can help you. I'm really glad to, to start this uh, set of informal sessions to, to teach you about Kotlin, and as I mentioned, if you have any questions or, or you want me to talk about anything in particular that you may be interested in, use the comments below and and subscribe to whatever platform you are using to to watch them and i'll be really happy to continue talking about all this thank you very much for for attending today and for watching this video and see you in the next one bye